On the shore of Lake Wakatipu, a tent tucked behind a bush contains everything that Paula Martin owns in this world. It's rough. <laughs> it's um, no access to showers. It's just a, a toilet. And, uh, you can't drink the water. I've got to get water from town. It's rough and it's wearing me down. It's affecting my mental health and it's affecting my physical health. Uh, I've just been doing it for too long and uh, it's taking a toll. Yeah. Paula works as a cleaner, but due to the shortage of accommodation, she hasn't been able to find a suitable rental. 18 months in a tent. Been looking for a place to live, but um, as I'm like uh, older and I work nights, um, I find it really difficult to find anywhere. And Paula's not the only Queenstown resident living at the 12 mile Delta campsite. I've got a comfortable bed. Um, I've got two layers of tent just to help um, insulate things a bit from the cold and the heat. And you, you can get warm enough in the winter, you can sleep okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's manageable. It's the summers that are really hard. One of the founders of the Queenstown Housing Initiative, Hannah Sullivan, says cases like Paula's demonstrate why action is needed now. She started the initiative as a voice for people who are houseless, as distinct to being homeless. She says houselessness has its own particular issues. She shows us the facilities available at the camp. In the evening, um, there's no lights or anything like that, so it's a very, very, very dark space. Um, there are there's running water, but you can't drink the water here either, um, and so yeah, it's just this one very basic facility that is in use for the whole larger area. The housing initiative has also been supporting a family of five who arrived in Queenstown for the parents' work, only to find their rental had fallen through at the last minute. These children were living in a tent and going to school. Um, it was just really sad to see, and the, all I could do was come and give them little chocolate bars and bring soup when I made some. After a long and difficult search, Kingston Orteney finally found a place to live. We struggled for a good while. It was just lucky that one of our uh, one of our mates's missus was um, our property manager, so we got in there that way. Also, it's knowing someone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to know someone, eh, Russ? Man, it was hard. Yeah, and they don't, oh, quite a lot of people don't want the young fellas or whatever in their houses, you know, they think they'll just piss up, but nah, it's all right. Queenstown Lakes Community Housing Trust Chief Executive Julie Scott says there are 1,048 households, that's households rather than individuals, on its housing waiting lists. And there are few kainga order houses in the region. Historically it used to go up by around 100 households per annum, but um, more recently, some, of, some months we've seen 100 reg registrations online in just one month. She has hopes that a five-year action plan that includes government organisations will make a difference. Pre-COVID, there was uh, huge housing stress in terms of, particularly on the rental rental property market. And then obviously we had COVID, rents went back probably by around 30% and it was um, quite achievable and there's plenty of availability out there. But now what we've seen, we're back up at pre-COVID numbers. For now, Paula Martin faces summer in her tent. The winters are manageable, I mean it's cold but you can put extra layers on or whatever. Uh, it's the summers that are really hard, the sun gets up at like 6 o'clock and it's in the tent it's really hot which uh, makes it hard when you're working nights. Paula remains hopeful the situation in her hometown of 23 years will improve.